Okay guys, so while I'm out here just enjoying the peace and nature, I decided that enough has finally changed for me to do an updated 2020 EDC. And I think enough has changed to justify it. So today, let's jump in to my 2020 EDC. Now as I always do with these EDC videos, first I'm going to get the older stuff or the stuff that hasn't really changed that much, and then we'll jump into some of the newer stuff. So starting off with some of the older uh, carry items, first is the G-Shock 5081, 5180, something like that. I can never remember its technical name, but this is the watch that I'm carrying. And as mentioned in other videos, I carry a bigger, thicker banded watch, uh, primarily due to my wrist and how picky it is. Next to that, we got the good old classic, just satin Zippo that I carry for survival circumstances and occasionally uh, finishing up some paracord work. Then we got a Trayvax Summit wallet here. It's just a really basic uh, kind of skeleton, you know, steel wallet. I've had this thing for years, I love it, absolutely. No need to change that. Next to that, I believe I've shown this one before, but this is the Phoenix UC35, and it's a pretty good flashlight. We are in that time of year where I'm going to start uh, changing my flashlight to something a little bit less bulky and less powerful, but for the time being, it's still getting dark enough at night that having a nice bright flashlight is handy. So then we got the good old Galaxy S10 uh, Edge uh, phone. Nothing new here or necessarily fancy, but it's just a good old reliable phone in an OtterBox Defender, as is my standard. Okay. Then lastly, moving. Then lastly, moving to the multi-tool. It's just an orange-handled uh, Charge Plus, and this is just a good old tool. Faithful, reliable, useful, and carry this thing a lot serves a lot of purposes so just a leatherman server leatherman charge plus okay so now getting into some of the uh, changes that the edc has undergone so the first one i'm going to go to is the knives so we actually have two new knives or two different knives for the channel the first one is something that's not entirely new to me but is the chris reeve knives Sabent large sabenza 21 in a tanto tip in case you haven't already been able to tell and of course this one does have the micarta inlays on both sides and i decided after a while of missing my original sabenza that was an insane grind uh, that I wanted to get another Sabenza but I wanted to get something that was a little bit different to me something that I hadn't already had in the past and so that's why I chose the uh, micarta inlays with the tanto tip because if I have to choose a Sabenza tip style aside from the Insingo I think I actually like the tanto a little bit more than the Insingo but they're very close up there and honestly this thing just looks so crazy cool uh, i really like the way uh chris reeve does the sabenza's tanto tip next to that is yet another micarta handled knife and that is the sc azula 2 with a kind of black wash finish on it essentially it's not a technical black wash but it is a black finish that has been stone washed and i really like the way this knife looks it just with its rough micarta and that black wash finish just makes it look really rustic and really uh tough it looks like it's been through hell so it is so far what i've been carrying uh, just as a neck knife. <clears throat> so next to that, just got a pretty standard Sharpie pen. I've tried out a lot of pens, and I do mix it up, sometimes running a Fisher Space pen. But I'm not going to lie, these Sharpie uh, pens that are more like a marker than a pen, they write really well, and they have a super fine point on them. So I really like the way these things work. At first, at first, I wasn't a huge fan of the uh, style or the tip, but I've actually grown pretty accustomed to them, and I've done a lot of writing and drawing with these uh, pens. So, lastly is... So next. So, next is the EDC handgun, and this is a Springfield 
uh, compact range officer chambered in at nine mils. I'm sure you can read and in the magazine as well as in the gun itself is Hornady critical duty. And this is their 135 grain. This is their 135 grain plus P load. And yeah, so it's a 1911. A lot of people may not like that, but I'm really trying to, for myself and for what I want, I'm really trying to make appendix carry work for me. And this handgun makes appendix carry really work for me. So it's a technically eight in the magazine, one in the chamber, but you can usually overload this magazine. It's flush fitting to nine rounds. So it's a nine in the magazine, one in the chamber, a uh, handgun. And that being said, plus it's a really compact or really slim size and ease of carry, it makes it really nice for appendix, at least for me. And then in this, so then the holster for it is just a Don Hume uh, leather holster that unfortunately was for a commander size 1911. So I had to trim it a little bit, as you guys can see, to make it work a little bit better for this more of an officer sized handgun. But overall, it works for me and it's a little bit homebrew, but it does the job just fine. Then lastly is just my keys, which is an assortment of office keys slash my uh, Toyota Tundra keys and auto start for that. So it's just an assortment of different stuff, uh, all on a recycled firefighter uh, lanyard that just hangs on my belt usually. So nothing too special there, just kind of a crazy assortment of odds and ends, but has the vehicle keys and that's all that matters. <laughs> Okay guys, so that's the basics of my everyday carry for 2020 and this COVID season. Um, as always, I try to keep it pretty basic and pretty user friendly for myself. And that's basically not too many changes, but a handful of changes and maybe some up class, more upscale uh, kind of changes to the uh, setup. Anyways guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.